what is going on guys it is your boy Cecil here bringing us a video here today bringing us a Photoshop slash source filmmaker video today so you guys have no idea what source filmmaker is it's actually a really cool uh, free uh, editing slash not editing program I would most likely call it an animation program so you guys can get all these really cool rigs and whatnot so I'm gonna start off with the video of course teach you guys how to uh, how to get your models and how to get this really cool simple Lightroom that you can work with um, and all that cool stuff like that right so if you guys have no idea what source filmmaker is, is how do you can create these really cool uh, sort of a Fortnite and or any other SFM model that you can basically find SFM is short for source filmmaker um any sfm model that you can end up finding maybe you can have a csgo one or anything like i said anything you probably end up finding it's been around for a while in steam at least so you can make these really cool fortnite renders like so and uh, they're located in your steam store so you guys just click on your steam store <laughs> under your search you just type in source and then film you probably make it you'll be the only one right there for you guys to click on so it's gonna be this little uh this little green sort of uh thumbnail for you guys and uh, when you scroll down you just want to click where it says use source filmmaker and where it says free it'll download take maybe 15 20 minutes not too difficult whatsoever and then you'll just drop right into the program and we'll get this thing going from there now as you can see the rigs themselves are very very easy to work with the ui is fairly uh, decently clean to work with as well so you can see uh most of the models that they have also do have like you know face flex and whatnot which means you can move their eyebrows um mouse lips facial features their neck area um so yeah it's really cool i want to show you guys how to do this because honestly it's been around for a little bit now and i want to kind of like put my hands in and see how 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 cool it can get you know what i mean so this is gonna be used for of course thumbnail banners whatever the hell you guys end up doing it for um, but most likely I'm probably using it for thumbnails that's the most like prevalent way I've been seeing it being used with on you know YouTube and the community and such so with that being said let's just jump right into this thing and uh, to like the video you can see it down below which will mostly be this PSD right here I don't know if you guys want it maybe you guys do it's a very very simple PSD I'm gonna show you guys to do it in the video anyway but just in that case whatever uh anyway with that being said before that 96,000 subscribers we hit it thank you very very much I just looked at it right now it's 96,065 let's just get this thing going uh, see you guys in a second. All right, guys, we're gonna get this thing going. So first off, I'll give you guys two different links to get your actual SFM models from for Fortnite at least. So there's gonna be a first one is in Source Filmmaker uh, community sort of like workshop, right? So in uh, Steam, I guess you can say they have this thing called subscribers, almost like a streamlined way of getting direct downloads and through like things that might work. Like you can download uh, different maps for CS:GO and stuff like that for like private matches. Just simply like, pressing the word subscribe and it'll just be in there because Steam has kind of like all linked together. So if you guys scroll through this browsing little area here and you like. Some Something you want or if you click on something you want like you want to probably use a wizard or something like that you can click on it click on the word subscribe and or if you just know what you want you can just hover right over this bottom right button right here this little plus this little green plus button is actually another way of subscribing and once you guys subscribe to it it'll just say hey you subscribe i'll do it right now let's just click on it and you'll see a little, little button says you have just subscribed to this item. So when you actually jump into Source Filmmaker, it'll say, hey, there's a few different subscribers that we haven't downloaded yet through Source Filmmaker. And then basically it'll download it for you guys and it'll be in your actual Source Filmmaker models and all that cool stuff. So another one is uh, sfmlab.com, which is more or less something that you can probably get some more weapons to it and or other skins that might just not be available in your Source Filmmaker community. You know what I mean? So that being said, this is more of a direct download. So you might have to actually drag the file. You will have to actually drag the file from one point to another, which I'll show you guys how to do it in a second. But before I show you guys how to do that, there's this really, really cool little white light room that you guys saw in the beginning of the video, little white background and whatnot. That is from this YouTuber called Chronic Lardio, Lardo, I believe is how you say it. Um, this is really cool, just like simple, like white, just back speak or back kind of plate to your actual source filmmaker. I needed one because I, of course you can't actually work without like a, a cool little map to work with, or at least a backing and or you have to like work with like lighting, but this makes it very, very easy, very simple. And with that being said, the download link will be in the description below for you guys as well. Um, but let me just show you guys really quick the how to throw in that little white uh, room into your actual Cinema 4D. Uh, I keep saying Cinema 4D. I'm going to say that quite a bit of times. Your source filmmaker, okay? So basically, you're going to go into your stream, uh, your Steam. <clears throat> now, in your search options, if you want, if you don't, you can't find your or your source filmmaker. You might have the the games enabled. So you want to just click on the word games. And you want to go to where it says software. Then you want to right click on where it says source filmmaker. Right click properties. You want to go to local files you want to go to browse local files then when it's over here you want to just double click on the word game you want to double click on tf movies then you want to go to where it says maps and then you want oops not maps you want to go to where it says um yeah maps sorry i don't know why i thought i was wrong uh, but then you just take the download that you got for the white room and you just simply just drag it right into there you are you can see already have it in there but you just simply drag it right here and it'll be just be available for you guys in the maps for source filmmaker now when it comes to putting in models that you've downloaded what you would want to do is go to your game you want to go to tf movies and then you want to just sit in this little section right here now when you download it might look like something like this so i'm gonna try to find where i put my folder where did it go bro 
right here, I, I downloaded a uh, steel, steel site, steel site skin, I guess you would say, right here, as you can see. So all you would have to do is just take these little files here and just drag them right, just straight into this file right here. And then it'll probably ask you to replace this simply because I actually have files already of these, of course, in there. But I'll just play, say replace the files in destination, just like so. When you replace them, um, you might or might not. I don't know if it's like a thing that you always get it. But if you always get it, just put replace. If not, just simply when you drag it and you drag it in. But what's going to happen is when you open up Source Filmmaker, you guys will actually have the model for you guys direct download it inside the files themselves. So if you guys want to see where it is, it would be like right here, right? And was, this is the the still the steel steel site. That's a weird name to say for some reason. Um, that's the skin right there. So that's just kind of like getting rid of the whole questions that you might ask. At least uh, how to actually put your models or download your models and put them inside Source Filmmaker. Now the next thing is actually just jumping into Source Filmmaker and just showing you guys the very very simple tricks and easy ways to rig actually your uh, your character and whatnot. So let's go ahead and just jump right into that. And uh, yeah, let's just let's get into it. All right, guys. So you guys first load up your actual Source Filmmaker program here. The first thing that's gonna ask you guys is how to create your new session. All you have to do is name your session if you guys want to name it. Otherwise, what you have to do is press the word create, just like so. Now, the first thing you probably want to do is make sure you actually load your map first. Now, that map I'm talking about is that white background little layer, sort of like, or that dot, what is it called, BSP file, right? That I made you guys download and actually put inside your local files for your actual Source program itself. Now, to load that thing, all you have to do is right, right click on the actual preview canvas, click on load map. Click on the, well, well first off, you want to type in the word white under your filter. And when you type in white, most of the only thing that's going to be available for you guys is going to be the white room.bsp. If you guys want to type that all out for some reason, if you have a lot of white BSPs, if you guys are like, like a freaking source file, like mass or whatever, but all you have to do is press open, just like so. Now, the first one I actually opened this thing, it took like a good 30, like 30 seconds, but this should take a little bit more, like a five seconds. Okay, five seconds. Pretty good. Um, yeah, but for some reason, the first time I opened it, it took a little bit of a long time. I don't know why, but most likely probably happened to you guys, so don't get worried about it. But once you have, have this little map loaded in now, it's going to ha have a better preview kind of section and also have a white background for you guys to actually put inside of Photoshop. And it's very, very easy, to, of course, to delete things off of Photoshop when it comes to like a white background and whatnot. But if you guys do not actually have your map loaded first off, the first thing to happen for you guys is you actually load in your characters, which I'm going to show you guys right now. Right click, just like so, on the actual canvas on the left-hand side here. Go to where it says create animation set for new model. You select that just like so. Now, when you guys, oh, if you guys ever, if you guys excuse me, ended up opening this without a map loaded, you guys will actually be able to see the model itself. Now, the two models I have right now under workshop, by the way, mod filter. On the drop down here, I actually scroll down where it says workshop because the only files that I personally have downloaded are the ones from the Steam Workshop community that I was showing you guys before. So if you guys want to just only use the workshop ones, you can just use the actual mod filter workshop to actually just see those alone. Now, the only ones that I have is, a, uh, is the Marshmallow one that I actually downloaded from you guys um, from the last clip. And then the one that I per uh, personally originally was playing around with, which is the uh, John Wick sort of Reaper skin, right? So I want to quickly show you guys as well, though. Even if you have SFF, uh, SFM open, if you guys go to the source file right here, and you guys go to where it says, um, let's, let's just say you want to download this Dominator skin. Let's just press this, just like so, subscribe to it. Now, when you go hop back into Source Filmmaker, you're going to see this little download queue. Now, you might actually see this the first time you actually open up SFM. Um, it's going to say, hey, do you guys want to download the skins that you actually end up you know, downloading or excuse me, subscribing to on the workshop? You press OK if you guys want to download them. If you, guys don't, if you change your mind, you can just simply uncheck it and press OK. But I want to download and press OK. Now, this might happen to you guys. Now, I did this on purpose for you guys, by the way. Um, for some reason, sometimes it has a lot of the same dot VF. I, I find this dot VTF file a lot um, for this character light warp. I have no idea what it personally is, but for me, when I press yes to all, it does not give me any problems whatsoever. Now, if for whatever reason that does not happen to you guys, which most likely probably won't unless they share the same file, all you have to do is you're going to see this workshop, uh, the, the, you're going to see this next frame say all files have been downloaded. Press OK. And now, if you go back into your source filmmaker, Right, I'm gonna press rescan because we have new files and say air for a second. And now we're gonna have our third uh, skin here, which is actually the Dominator skin, right? So the file that it shared was from this skin itself. If you press no, the skin will actually turn purple. Now, if it turns purple, you have to delete both of them, close down source, and then reopen it. A little kind of like thing that I end up finding on myself, kind of like working with it a little bit. Um, if you end up seeing like a purple sort of like texture missing, it's mostly because you have to download whatever previous one you downloaded or previous skin you downloaded, just delete both of them, including this one, close it down, reopen it, and it'll fix your problem. I know you're going to run into it. I know for a fact. Um, hopefully that if you guys listen to that, you guys understand it, but I'm going to use a John Wick skin for this uh, example right here and press open. Now, for some reason, my audio levels went freaking skyrocketing. I, I saw that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to personally go ahead and just show you guys really quickly the camera settings. Now, if you hold Alt, by the way, Alt is going to be your best friend when it comes to camera settings. Holding Alt, right clicking, moving up and down is how you zoom in and out. And then holding left click is how you guys rotate around. Now, 
if you guys want to rotate around the actual skin itself all you have to do is just make sure you have this selected right here and you can rotate around the skin on its own just like so and also zoom in on the skin just like so as well so holding alt best friend whatsoever and i'm gonna move this really quickly to back to more of like a good canvas i'm gonna say like please move up can you move up i'll move the camera all right, I, first, I'm still not using this camera thing. I hope you guys are way, way better than me at it, but holy crap, I just, I don't like the whole holding, holding alt thing, but whatever, it still works out. All you have to do is get used to it, but <clears throat> now that I have my Reaper skin in a pretty good frame right here, I'm gonna say a little bit more like so, so you can actually see the arm maybe. Okay, more better. Okay, right, so. When you have extra Reaper skin selected, the way you get to get your rig and or your, I guess, your exoskeleton to see where all the joints are and stuff like that, all you have to do is click on the thing right to the timeline of the clip editor. It's called the actual motion editor. So this will show you guys all the exo sort of points and all that keyframing, all that cool stuff, and how you actually move all your joints inside the actual rig. Now, the way you all end up doing it, all you have to do, excuse me, is hold control, select on a point, I'm gonna say the bicep upper arm, click on it, you'll see this little part is now selected. So what we're gonna do is you can either use the actual movement, sort of like uh, movement axis, which is kind of like the X and Y axis, just moving it up and down. Now, realistically, this is not gonna work out for you guys because moving, of course, a, uh, a more of a joint up and down does not really work out in the same, it doesn't really, that's not that's not anatomy. English is hard. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, host, I'm gonna use the actual rotation tool, which is third of the actual, uh, these little the toolbars here, right? With the rotation here, I'm gonna rotate this just like so. Oops, I wanna kinda use the actual axes. I would honestly only use like the uh, the blue, green, and red axis when you're actually first using it because it's actually a little more, um, how do you say, more precise, right? Now let's say you, you, like, you like that rotation, I'm gonna hold control, I'm gonna click on the lower arm right here, and we're gonna move this up, uh-oh. We're gonna move this like this, move this like that, right? Now I have nothing really in mind right now, but I'm more or less trying to show you guys how this kind of works out. You can see how this works. Now, let's say you want to move a finger. Let's just like control zoom in this in, not control alt. Zoom in, please. There we go. Now, you want to see some of these little fingers. You can just kind of make them like into like a fist. Oh, God. That was not, please. Okay. Let me click on the uh, blue. There we go. Jeez, that was difficult for some reason. All right. Take this, kind of make a fist if you guys want to. Or maybe he's counting. Maybe he's counting. Who the heck knows? Um, but I'm also going to show you guys the little face features you can mess around with. The, the whole little face flex is most likely the, the honestly, the most, like, prevalent um, use of this is kind of get these really cool reactions out of the Fortnite characters um, for, like, really cool clickbaity kind of titles, right? Now, let me go and just kind of zoom into this face very quick. Okay. Can you, get, can you guys honestly tell how bad I am with this camera? It's so, it's so weird. There's no way people are going to get used to this as easy as... Is he, I can just, maybe I just suck. I can't do it. Um, why is it not like, <clears throat> okay, this is going to work. Okay. All right. I just want to get, I just wanted to get it like faced on, please. Can you just let me, okay, <laughs> whatever. This will work. Anyway, if I hold control, <clears throat> You can see these little face, little features, little keyframes on like different parts of the actual face, um, I guess face features, right? If I just hold control and click on them, and you see, I move the actual, I, you, so by the way, if you're gonna use the, use the you're gonna use the movement tool, um, all you can do is you can you click with the axis right here, the axes, little lines here, or you can click on the actual square itself and move these. So I probably just do that, just simply, I want to move it up really quick. <clears throat> control, we'll move this one up. <clears throat> We'll say, hey, this little mid brow section here, we'll move this up a little bit. Let's say, hey, he's more surprised since he's like getting like surprised. Move his eyelid up to make his eyes show a little bit more. We'll move this one up as well. Be like, hey, he, that's a to that's totally a surprise face, right? You can even move the eyes itself. I'll rotate them and be like, uh, like maybe he's like looking this way, right? Eyes, he's looking this way, like, uh oh, this is happening. I have no idea, but I'm just gonna show you guys how to actually work around with the rig itself. Have fun with it. I most likely actually put our, up a reference on Google. Maybe you type in like surprise face um, or like surprise face with like hands on face or just something more descriptive. So that way you guys actually go ahead and like almost like copy the face feature so you get more or less the actual motion that you guys are going for. Um, Cause of course facial expressions themselves are kind of like, you know, it's, it's, it's a realm of its own. Like there's 1 million different face expressions that have different emotions behind them. So at least get as, get as most accurate as possible is mostly your best bet. Now what I'm gonna do this for you guys as well is I'm gonna zoom this out for a second. Just quickly show you guys how to render this baby out. And it's very, very easy. I'm just gonna kind of get a better frame. Also something like that is pretty good. So when you have your frame already set, your rig is done, all that good stuff. All you have to do is go into your file here, go to where it says export. 
expert as a poster. Now, <clears throat> it's going to ask you guys if you want to save it or not. I'm going to continue without saving, just like so. And now, the first thing you want to do, the only thing you really have to do is just change where your format is. Your TGA file is actually going to be a PNG file, and then make sure 1920 by 1080p. Now, I already have it under a cool little uh, render kind of folder. I'm going to call this Tutorial 3. <coughs> just like so. Press export, and it takes about 15, 20 seconds, depending on your computer, I guess it would be like. But it's a very, very simple and easy render. Excuse me, I have something in my throat. Uh, on my chest uh but what i'm gonna say really quickly is the actual settings and or the actual quality itself is very close to uh Fortnite on its own without even using post or doing anything like lighting fancy inside source filmmaker so what i want to do is kind of just go over here really quickly this tutorial two i want to just take the tutorial three really quickly put it in here for reference right we have this little file here we'll just make it a little more larger just like so press enter cool so you can actually see like i said the render itself is actually pretty good Oh, that looked disgusting. Why did it actually load in like that? Okay, let's just please not load in with a stretch feature. Okay, there we go. All right. Anyway, so you can see like it, the actual the the settings and or quality itself is actually pretty it's pretty accurate, honestly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press right click and then rashes layer right away, just so I can get rid of the white. And the way I do that is just simply use the magic wand tool, which is actually W on your keyboard. Select the white. You can even hold control or shift, excuse me. You can select multiple parts of the white, which is all this empty spaces right here, all the, all the enclosed spaces. Then you press delete on your keyboard. And then you guys will see, you can make this a little more bigger. The, the quality itself is actually, like, I, I, I like it. You can probably put a light, maybe above his face here. If you guys want to put lights, by the way, all you have to do is just right click, uh, create animation set for new light, just like so. Now, I would most likely click on the light itself, click on where it says intensity, and lower this down quite a bit. That's even, that's even, that's pretty, eh. that's probably a little bit too intense, but mess with the light itself, the intensity itself, maybe the like, direction of where it is. Um, but right now, I think that's pretty good, but I want to quickly show you guys one thing as well. Now, if you are using like a more darker background, you're most likely going to see this right here. You guys probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but I'm talking about this little white outline right here. This little white outline, and this white outline right here is kind of like this, it's, it's just tilting for me. I want to show you guys really quick how to get rid of it. If I just zoom in really quickly. All you have to do is hold control and click on the thumbnail of the actual picture itself, just like so. What you want to do is go to uh, select, modify, contract by pixels one, press OK. And all you have to do is actually click on the actual thumbnail itself, press M on your keyboard, just like so, or click on the layer itself, excuse me, M on your keyboard. It gives you the option when you right click to layer via cut. So that's M on your keyboard that's using this tool right here, right clicking, layer via cut. So now if I just quickly zoom out for a second, I delete the bit, the layer below it, which is going to be the stuff we don't want. All I have to do is unhide it and hide it. You can see the white line gets like removed, and it kind of just kind of has a more of a quality feature to it, so it doesn't look like a random cutout. You know what I mean? So, with that being done, I believe that is basically it for the sense of at least showing you guys how to do the render. I'm going to quickly just kind of pan over to more of like a new setting or a new scene for you guys to kind of just show you guys how to do this really cool, simple, very quick sort of sort of like courage um, thumbnail set. So I'm going to show, show you guys really quickly, and we're going to get this thing going. Okay. Let's do it. All right, guys. So I want to quickly show you this really simple, very quick, and sort of like uh, like thumbnail. All right, guys. Quick little thumbnail portion of this video. Very simple little style to this here. I almost kind of like have like uh, two videos on this kind of like little simple gradient style as well. But anyway, just to quick, kind of quickly run it down. I already have these assets here, a background, and this really simple little half tone sort of um, fun little texture to use. Um, this will be in the tune lights, uh, the video, by the way, it's okay, all good. But for the actual background here, above the background, I'm gonna basically be using a gradient map. So for this here, I'm using gradient map, and I'm just gonna go into this really quickly, the gradient editor. I'm just gonna be using this one right here. So on the left-hand side, by the way, is your shadows. On the right-hand side is your highlights. I like to highlight that sometimes in my videos because gradients aren't just like two colors meshing. There's actually a reason for them meshing and it's highlights and shadows. Okay, so on the left-hand side is shadows. I already have this at pure black, just like so. I'm going to move this over here. I don't know why it's over there. Um, by the way, if you have it over here, you're just weird. Over here is superior. Press OK. On the right-hand side here, I'm using a very simple, cool little color. We'll just use orange for this case, something a little more lighter, preferably. So the hex code for this, if you guys want to use it, is FF671D. I'm going to press OK. Press OK again. By the way, before I do that, just this color can be whatever you guys want it to be. Um, but I'm just going to say this is where your actual color is going to actually uh, show up for your actual background. So you're going to have the black as your highlights and the color on your right for the actual, uh, uh, excuse me, left shadows, right highlights. Sorry. Press OK. So now that I have this here, the actual font that I'm going to be using in today's video, I'm going to delete this really quickly. I don't need that. Um, the font is going to be uh, called Burbank. I'm sure everyone knows that already. I'm going to call this... Uh, uh, what did I call it say? You won't believe what he said. What did I say it was? You or 
Did he just... Right? Did he just say that? Is that what I said before? I have no idea. I'm just going to use what I just said. Oh, uh, did he just... Oh my god. What did I actually put? What was it? I'm, I want to see now. Did he not... He did not say that. Okay. Bro, I just needed to see it because it just tilted the hell out of me for a second. I honestly forgot what I said. Um, He did not. So he did not. Right? Alright. And then say that. Right? Say that. Okay, now that we have this here, very simple little flat sort of text style here. Like I said, I'm kind of going off of what Courage's um, thumbnail designer does for himself. I'm going to basically just say, hey, <clears throat> the word not, I'm a highlight. Just kind of like say, hey, I know the facial features don't really match here, but the one I had before, previously did match. I'm just going to kind of go off what I did before, right? But probably most likely want to highlight whatever word or exaggeration in the actual title itself. Um, highlight that word with a nice little simple color, which I'm going to do right now. I'm going to simply just click on the word color here while I have it highlighted on my character's table. I'm gonna click on orange, right, that I have in the background set. But I'm just gonna simply move this up all the way to like around here. And if I wanna make it a little more darker, I'll say, nah, I actually don't wanna make it darker. I wanna say, hey, here, just simply move it up. I'll say right about there is pretty good, right? He did not say that. Simply just press OK. When the text is done highlighted, now what I'm gonna do is make a new layer. Take a nice simple brush here. And with this brush here, I'm gonna make a nice little, pretty big diameter, soft brush. So that means zero hardness over here. So big brush, zero hardness. That's not zero. This is zero. Right? And I'm going to simply just take a nice little orange. The way I'm going to do is I'm going to use the eyedropper tool. So if you hold Alt while you actually have your brush enabled, you can see this little eyedropper tool. I'm going to kind of like scroll around to find like a nice sort of mid-tone, sort of gray, not grayish, but darker tone orange. Click right here. Right around where this is the text. Go from change it from blend mode normal to uh, linear dodge add. I'll click one time over here for the actual face as well to kind of melt into the text as well. And then I'll just say, hey, there is my very simple, very quick and uh kind of like cool little thumbnail right almost like a courage kind of style kind of thumbnail but honestly it's not as busy as his but oh oh the, the actual do this as well what i'll do is i'll take a nice little simple outer glow in the actual render and for the settings here i'll put it on 75 on um, opacity blend mode linear dodge add and simply just use a nice little orange from the outside as well but just make this bring this up right giving like a nice little glow to it and there is where I would probably say, hey, very simple, very clean, very fun, and also kind of just comments the, hi the highlight of the render itself, um, or like the, the conscious of the render itself, the contrast of the render itself. So with that being said, today's video is actually done. So um, like I said, I most likely will have like a Simple 4D version of this right here, um, kind of like just messing around with Rays and Simple 4D with other games maybe or not. I have no idea what I'm gonna end up doing. I don't have to personally find the renders of them. It's so, like right now, like Apex Legends is a really, really fun little crazy a uh, very high popular game, but there's no like real models out right now because it's of course take time. So of course the reason why this is such a quick tutorial in a sense, right? Um, is simply because I'm already already did the rigs and already modeled it. So I appreciate those individuals. And uh, if you happen to be actual model or a rigger or or animator himself, maybe you want to comment down below. We can check out your stuff. Maybe your website. I'll look at it and just kind of verify it. If you guys want to do that, if you guys have any cool models for either Cinema 4D or SFM in the future video for S uh, for Cinema 4D, but SFM for now in this case. But with that being said, I'm done. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video today to like the video you can see down below which is mostly going to be the psd of the video as always thank you guys so very much by the way for 96,000 subscribers i'm going to be out talk to you guys later since we out peace something to keep smiling stay positive and stay freaking productive guys later